This is the Stealth Cast. Let's do this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second episode of the Stealth Cast. I'm your host, Nikki. Thank you all for joining me today, and thank you for all your comments, feedback, and just general attention on the first episode of the Stealth Cast. Really appreciate that. If you haven't watched it, don't worry. I'll put these all in a playlist. And I have heard your guys' reviews and feedback. A lot of you guys have been wanting me to make an RSS feed, stick it on iTunes, put it on other podcasting apps. So I'm going to try to make it as accessible as possible for you guys by putting it on as much stuff as I can because a lot of you guys are really supporting it. got a lot more support than I thought it would. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. Welcome to today's episode. It is Tuesday, the 9th, and actually September 9th. I record these the day before, but I post it the day later, so I say it's the day that you hear it on because you wouldn't know. If I didn't just tell you, you probably wouldn't have known that. But I need some time to do some editing, do some rendering, do some uploading, so I pretend it's the day after I work. Don't don't tell anyone, okay? Didn't hear it from me. Thanks for coming, guys. I just dropped by. Obviously, September 9th, it is the day of the Destiny release. I just stopped by GameStop to finalize my copy, and I came back home. The way it works is you can head over to GameStop, finalize your copy, pay it off, say, yeah, I'm going to come pick it up, uh, and it's about 7 p.m. right now. Then you go home, take a nap, or do a podcast, and then go back, and you can go straight to the front of the line because I was there on point as soon as they were finalizing orders, so I don't have to stand out there in the cold all day because I would really suck, and it's only like a five-minute drive. One thing I really noticed at these midnight launches, and I've been to a lot of midnight launches, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Ops 2, GTA 5, just to name a few. I've been to plenty more midnight launches than that. There seems to be a huge gender gap there I, I swear it's like a hundred to one and the one girl who's there is like this guy's girlfriend who doesn't play games or someone's little daughter or someone's mom or something because I've, I've seen a lot of reports lately about how there are an equal number of guy gamers and girl gamers and uh, of course I think they're counting mobile games which you don't really go to midnight launches to do you so as far as console releases go triple a title releases go people who are playing that it seems to be primarily by far males but to counter that i wanted to tell you guys a story this is from my good pal joe and this is a a set of stories that i've accumulated over the years from different midnight launches sometimes joe is there and sometimes he's not so let me let me tell you guys the first part of what i'm gonna call The Legend of Joe, video game truck dude. He owns a video game truck, that's why I'm calling it that. So every midnight launch, not every midnight launch, most of them, Joe is there. And I stopped by today, he wasn't there, so I'm I'm a bit worried he's not going to show up. I haven't seen him for quite a while. You know, midnight launches don't really happen every month, so I don't see him too often. He's this older dude, probably in his mid-40s. And he owns a video game truck. Basically what that is, is there are four TVs in there, a bunch of different consoles, 360s, PS3s, Wii's. I'm not sure if he has any next-gen consoles. I hesitate to call them next-gen because they're current-gen. They've been out for almost a year. PS4, Xbox One, they're current-gen consoles now. It's been out for a year. But anyway, he has PS3s, Wii's, and 360s there. There are four TVs, a bunch of games, a bunch of controllers, and... The catch is like, it, the, their motto, I should say, is up to 16 players. So what people will do is they'll rent this video game truck for parties and he'll drive it over there. Bunch of people play games together and it's a ton of fun. This guy's story is a bit more interesting than that. So I was standing around, I believe it was the Assassin's Creed 3 release. And that's when I first spoke to him. He initially told me how he got into this business. Not a very successful business, not a lot of... Gaming businesses I've seen like that have been successful. There was another place nearby me, a side story, called the Etrium. And they would run tournaments. It was supposed to be like a hangout place. Bunch of Xboxes everywhere. No PS3s. And I'm kind of a PS3 player. So, uh, you know, I went over there, hung out with my friends. There were a few tournaments. People were like, Nikki, you show up. Take your team. You're so good at gaming, man. Show up. What? You think you're tough? So I, I went to one tournament. And I actually ended up losing... 
It was a Black Ops 1 tournament, and the score, it was Team Deathmatch, which if you've ever played any competitive gaming, that is a terrible fucking game mode for competitive gameplay, especially in Call of Duty, because basically you just camp for until the timer runs out. You can get one kill and then go hidden master status, lay down in bushes and not do anything for the rest of the game and, and win that way. There were no rules, so... The score was 47 to 47, and it was a team deathmatch to 50, a 3v3. I was the only one positive on my team, and we lost 47 to 50 to the team who eventually won because there was no rule set in place. Everything was clear to go. Grenade launchers, second chance, just overall things that really shouldn't be in the game. Those were all allowed, and when the enemy team saw it was 47 to 47, they're like, all right, let's bring out the big guns, and by that I mean the noob tubes and the second chance and it's just no those don't belong in competitive play anyway so joe's business joe the video game truck guy his business was similarly unsuccessful i haven't spoken to him lately he might be in the green is that the financial term for actually making money so this is how it started right super rich guy really good job i forget what his job was before because the first time i spoke to him was years ago super successful job right all of a sudden they lay everyone off and he was one of them so he turns to this company I'm, i think it's a company or it's just him doing it by himself in which case he made an investment on himself to basically take his truck attach a trailer to it stick some tvs in there and some consoles and he's a gamer himself he would go around and host parties in there or host get-togethers or whatever he needs to do. So it, I'm under the impression, people have told me he's working for a company, but I'm under the impression he's doing this by himself and he's an entrepreneur because he invested a lot of money into this and he said he wouldn't make it back. You know, he's got to pay for the trailer and the gas and all that stuff. He said he wouldn't have made it back until late this year. And I, I believe Assassin's Creed 3 came out about two years ago. So that's the first time I spoke to him. And the parties he's been to have been kind of insane. So I was talking about how Destiny's Midnight Launch, when I was there for about 10 minutes, was all guys. Most of the people, it seems, or a good portion of the people who rent out the video game truck are girls. And, you know, you'd think they'd you know play Mario Kart or whatever, whatever girls do when they play video games together. I don't know. It's a lot more intense than that, actually. He is uh, he has lost a lot of money because discs get broken, controllers get thrown into TVs, shit gets knocked down. It's pretty insane. Basically, you'll have 16 girls talking shit to each other in the back of this trailer, playing Just Dance, like seriously busting some moves and breaking some shit. It is hardcore, really freaking intense from what I've heard. Like, they take it really seriously. And to put that in perspective, I've been gaming since I was six months old and I have never broken a controller. He, he I think he lost like a TV, three discs, and like five Wii remotes, only a few of which he repaired in one instance, he told me, of him hosting a party. And of course, there's like a deposit, but still, it doesn't well, pay for that. Not, I don't know if they're like liable for breaking stuff. I don't know how all that works, but it's just a big hassle for him. And that's one of the stories. So he was super rich, right? And he would hang out at Dave and Buster's all the time, right? You know, he'd go there, tip the waiters and waitresses like 200% of his bill, which is an insane amount. You're supposed to tip like 20 to 30, I believe, 15 to 30, something like that. He's tipping them like 100, 150%, chilling at Dave and Buster's, playing all the games, making it fucking rain. Uh, and then he loses his job and then he goes to the video game truck job. And he's just... He's there at Dave and Buster's in tank top and shorts, you know, uh, looking all tired and trashy. And I guess there's a there's a big dress code at Dave and Buster's. If you don't know, it's sort of like a arcade with a dining part to it. Like you know, you'll eat your dinner, go out and play some games, and it's basically like Chuck E. Cheese for adults is the best way that I can describe it. And he would go there all the time, you know, make it rain, and then he'd show up there. Just tank top and shorts, like not shaving for a while. This guy really, really seemed to have gone downhill from this point. And, uh, you know, fancy place, supposed to dress up. They tried to kick him out, but the manager, you know, they recognize this guy, like treat him well, even though he was in his tank top and shorts. So he really appreciated that. And 
if there are any if there are any updates on how he's doing if he's pulled himself out of his slump he seemed to have been you know by now he should be at least breaking even hopefully he was a really cool guy to talk to we talked about games uh last time i saw him let's see gta 5 release i believe oh that was like a year ago that was over a year ago i saw him at the gta 5 release and he's a father and has a daughter and we were discussing violence in video games and he held the standpoint of i don't want my daughter playing these games which i can understand but he made the just or uh, he justified his point by saying you know i don't want her shooting up a school or anything like that which which to me is insane because one thing you can do in gta is car surf and you don't see in the news a huge spike of people car surfing because they do in GTA. You don't see me scaling walls because I played Assassin's Creed and jumping on people from like three stories high or flying into hay bales or running off of walls because I played Mirror's Edge. I don't do any of that. And I, I made the point that those people were already fucked up. You know, the people who shoot up schools and all that stuff. They were fucked up before they played video games and... Uh, It just so happened that that was a pastime of theirs. You know, it's something to do in their downtime. And it's such a common thing. Gaming has risen so, so much in popularity over the past decade that, you know, this guy shot up a school because he played video games can pretty much be equated to this guy shot up a school because he chewed bubblegum. So that was an interesting debate we had. It was very civil. That's one thing I like about talking to Joe the video game truck dude or my other friends in real life is it's very civil over the internet and i'm going to tie this into destiny in a second we can't seem to have civilized discussions at all well actually i shouldn't say at all because i do try to keep my twitch chat very civil and intelligent by the way join me for some destiny and other awesome games in my twitch stream twitch.tv slash stale shampoo anyway I feel in real life, you know, there's not that anonymity, so you're not swearing at other people and, you know, you have to have intelligent debates or you'll just be ejected from the conversation. On the internet, everyone's got a voice and they're untouchable, which pretty much is the formula for vulgarity and hatred and stupid people. So let's, I'm going to pick on COD because that's the game everyone seems to hate no matter what. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare to me looks amazing because... Pick 13 system, you know, I love that system from Black Ops 2. They have a bunch of new customization, the virtual lobby, the virtual firing range looks really cool. The new movement mechanics I'm really excited for. And everyone's like, oh, they stole that from Titanfall. Okay, there's there's so many games out there. They're going to borrow ideas from someone, you know. Oh, man, let's go back to the caveman ages. Those guys aren't freezing over there because they lit a fire. Let's start a fire. You know, if it's a good idea, let's borrow it over. I don't see a problem with that. Anyway, so Advanced Warfare, I just made a bunch of good points as to why I think it'll be good. It seems that, especially if you read the YouTube comment section, and it's my fucking fault for reading the YouTube comment section. I I know better than that. Just, Just don't go down there. It seems that people will watch these cinematic trailers or these gameplay trailers with the preconceived notion that it'll suck. And, you know, they watch it and they say, yep, I was right, it'll suck. And that's just self-confirming bias right there. And what I don't understand is why do people want things to fail so badly? Why, unless they're a competing business or say you're betting money on something like, oh, I hope this football team will fail, bet you a hundred bucks. I can't name any football teams. I don't watch any sports. Uh, okay, from that from that standpoint, I understand why you'd want something to fail. But from a consumer standpoint, why in the world would you want a game to fail? Don't you want the games industry to be successful? Don't you want them, you know, to keep making better and greater games? And also, it's not constructive. I think this game is going to suck or fuck Call of Duty. What do we gain from that? You know what I just said. I like the Pick Thirteen system. I like the customization. I like the movement mechanics. I like the new class of beam laser guns and all that fun stuff. I like dual wield LMGs, which is going to be sweet. I provide all these points as to why I think the game will be awesome. And if I were to have a debate over the internet, there would be people saying this game's going to suck. Well, why? It's the same thing every year. How is it the same thing every year? When people hate on things, they don't seem to actually provide any sort of criticism that the developer can further build off of. And also, people are just 
nasty and hateful towards lots of game developers, especially the female ones. I'm not going to get into that right now. But I wish whenever I brought something up, whether a game is good or bad, I'm not saying you can't hate on a game. I'm not saying you can't think a game will suck. I'm saying let's at least back up our points with some evidence. You know, I guess it would be the same way inversely if the YouTube comment section was filled with, oh man, this game is going to be awesome. Whereas, you know, in reality, everyone who thinks the game is going to be awesome is too busy jizzing their pants to type a comment and say, this is going to be awesome. The comment section is just all full of hatred. And I actually talked about this last week with PewDiePie and him turning off his comments. Constructive criticism, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't like something, then let the people producing it know how they can improve. Also, I feel like people hate things just because they want to be hipsters or it's the hype anti-hype model. Destiny, super hyped up, a lot of advertising. I can I can tell they spent a lot of money marketing this game, a lot of money. And you know, people see all these commercials and they see all their friends excited about it and they'll be like, "Ha!" I am immune to the hype. I'm smarter than you. I know something you don't. Destiny is going to suck. And people also, I also take problems with people giving their opinion on a game when they haven't watched all the trailers or, you know, even played the game. I feel like I have a pretty solid opinion on some games like Evolve, even though that's not out yet. I have like 24 hours logged in that game for playing the alpha and playing it at E3 and stuff like that. Making judgment calls such such drastic, of course, I don't really like the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover. I, I don't really like that phrase because let's say there was a pool of hot lava in front of you. Don't judge a book by its cover. It's fucking hot lava, bro. The shit looks dangerous. This cover looks dangerous. I don't want to jump into that. I believe more in, you know, judge a book by its cover, but also read the back a little bit and maybe the inside flaps and a bit about the author. I understand we can't read all the books in the world. I understand you can't play every game in the world. But let's at least go into it a little further than watching that two-minute live-action trailer. Watch a little bit of gameplay, you know, and then form your opinion. But even then, have room to change your opinion. You know, don't be so set on being right. Well, what do you gain from being right? Oh, yeah, Destiny's going to suck. And then you buy it. Oh, yeah, it sucked. Ha, huh, I was right. You know, good, good job, man. You just spent 60 bucks on a game that like this. You just go in there with the preconceived notion that it's going to suck. And I'm not trying to, you know, say Destiny is going to be the end all be all awesome game. Best ever. Bungie forever. I actually have never really owned a Bungie game. I've never had an Xbox. But the way I go into things is let's go into this with an open mind. Let's evaluate the game for you know, it's different mechanics, game modes. That's one thing Advanced Warfare was strong in is its game modes. Let's see, you know, the developer's philosophy and their take on how they're going to make this game, how they're going to make the maps, all that stuff. All, and of course, it's different for every genre of game. I feel like people go in there and they're just like, this game is going to suck balls. And then they're right. How often do you think someone goes into a gameplay trailer, watches it, says, this is going to suck and comes out like, oh man, I was so wrong on that. People, the internet, really have to learn how to go in things with an open mind. And of course, we all have biases, but those polarizing opinions on a game before it comes out, before you even play it, or even if you just had a taste of the beta, which is probably like 1% of the game, it it's not good at that point to have a polarizing opinion on something that you don't have any experience with. And that's really dangerous, not just in gaming, but overall. I watched this video the other day about how this guy, this this government agency or whoever, seized a bunch of airsoft guns because they felt like it could be converted into real weaponry. And if you don't know anything about airsoft guns, know that you cannot convert those into real weapons. Try, try to put a bullet in an airsoft, please. Try to put a bullet in an airsoft magazine. Guess what? You fucking can't because they're supposed to fit little six millimeter plastic spheres in them. I, I, do, I mean, I guess if you exchange every single part of an airsoft gun except the grip and the iron sights, you could make it, you know, that could be converted into a real weapon. You know, people who have these polarizing opinions, you can convert airsoft guns into real guns. I guess that's a, I guess that's a fact. 
a false fact. I guess opinion stated as false fact. It's because they have a polarizing opinion or a false fact without any experience in the actual thing that they're talking about. Pick up any of you, any of you listening to this right now. If you have an airsoft gun, look at the magazine. How in the fucking world could you ever fit an actual bullet into that also it's not weapons grade steel some of them are made out of plastic the cheap ones made out of plastic that it's gonna burn or i don't know exactly you know how guns work but i'm pretty sure you can't fire a bullet out of those you know it consists of a hop-up chamber and air coming out of it you remove that but you know bullets there's explosions and plastic melts and it's all bad it it's not gonna work the barrels are not rifled at all, and if you don't know how bullets work, um, you know, they spin kind of like a football, so you need a rifled barrel for that. Airsoft guns shoot spherical pellets, and you don't need rifling for that, or that's really going to, you know, mess up the trajectory of your shot, so they're just smooth barrels, which a lot of are really, really skinny because they're supposed to fit little six millimeter plastic pellets. You can't really launch a bullet through that barrel unless you replace the barrel, but then you have to like move the hop-up unit and the pistons and the bucking because those aren't used in real weapons. It's polarizing opinions. They're bad. Unless, unless you have experience in uh, the subject matter that you're speaking about. So going back to gaming, I know I went off on airsoft tangent right now let's all i'm not saying destiny is going to be the end all be all awesome game i think it's going to be good that's not a polarizing opinion and we'll see throughout you know the course of playing it you know logging in hours and hours if it actually turns out to be a really good game in fact i'm recording this on audacity right now and on my right screen i'm watching someone stream destiny right now if anything, it's a new experience. I'm really psyched for playing a new game. We have, let's see, The Last of Us, I've been playing, The Last of Us Remastered and PS3, The Last of Us. I've been playing that for 15 months. I've been streaming that for 15 months. Well, actually not 15 months. My stream is only 11 months old. But still, I am very, very ready for a new game. Destiny seems like it's going to be that escape, at least until Pokemon Alpha comes out. And the new Smash and Evolve is going to be so good. I've played, I've actually logged in 24 hours on that game, which I feel like is enough for you to give an educated opinion on a game. If you spent 24 hours on a game and you went into it with an open mind, then, uh, or at least not a polarizing opinion, this is going to suck, this is going to be the best thing ever. You know, it's it's like those reviews on Amazon. You should always read the the two, three, and four star reviews on Amazon because the one star and the five star reviews are a bit too clouded. Uh, their judgments are a bit too clouded to form an actual opinion. Anyway, let's get over to some news really quick. I feel like this ties in really, really well to what I've been talking about. Yelp now has court permission to change business ratings for money. This is from sfweekly.com. If you'd like to read this article for yourself, then you could check it out down there in the YouTube description. Really quick, in case you didn't know what Yelp is, it's basically this website business that rates other businesses. You know, you're looking for a tasty Korean restaurant to go to for dinner with your lovely lady. Then hop on Yelp if you've never been to one or if you're in a new area. Try to find the best one, closest one towards you, cheapest one, wherever the credentials, uh, best service, whatever you feel like is most important. And you can find a website based on or a business or whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be Korean food. Yelp is not just for Korean food. Based on that, Yelp now has the ability to change business ratings for money. Now, of course, every review you read on the internet needs to be taken with a grain of salt. You can't just, you know, read all the positives or just read all the negatives. You have to have a little bit of mixture of both. That's why I was talking about polarizing opinions earlier. It's pretty bad for small businesses because, I imagine you're a small business and you don't make a lot of money. Can't really pay Yelp to up your reviews. Meanwhile, big businesses are like, yo, Yelp, here's 50 trillion space dollars. Give me a six-star review. That's what's going to start happening, unfortunately. And Yelp, at the end of the day, it's funny because before I read this article, which has a, a strong bias on it, before I read this article, I read the headline 
And I thought the same thing that this article thought before I even read it. Yelp is a business at the end of the day. They want to make money. And I feel like people, businesses put up this false notion that they're your friend because they want your money. That's that's all they want at the end of the day. You know, it's kind of like prostitutes. Yeah, she'll treat you really nice. You know, do, I, I don't know why I used prostitutes. She doesn't actually love you. I'm sorry, unless she actually loves you. I'm sure someone has at some point fallen in love with a prostitute. Hmm. That's something to think about. Anyway, Yelp at the end of the day is a business. Let them run their business the way they will. Just know in the back of your mind, that they can change business ratings now if the businesses pay them. Keep that in the back of your mind. You know, read the reviews from the other people who might not be so biased. You know, talk to your friends and don't let Yelp be your only source anymore. If, you know, Yelp is giving up its integrity for a little bit of money. And there's always that balance there. You know, people are always like, sell out, you're running ads on your videos. Sell out, money whore. Those are, I feel like those words are thrown around too much. But I can see where they're coming from, you know? A writer's got their word. That's all they got. They have to have some sort of integrity. If they're just writing shit all day or lies, why why the... Well, I guess I was about to say, why the hell would you want to read them? But people still read People Magazine, don't they? Those other gossip magazines. Hmm. Keep in mind, whenever you read something, here's my message to you, that... Or hear something from anyone that... You try to determine whether or not it's a source with integrity. Is Nikki full of crap? Does he not cite his articles down in the description? Is your friend, you know, usually lying about the events that transpired in his stories? Is Yelp an actual credible source that wouldn't give up their integrity for money? Nothing wrong with that. People need food on the table. People need money to live. Just just keep in mind, integrity. Are they going to, you know, straight up tell the truth? I'm not just talking about Yelp, I'm talking about anyone. Or do you need to take what they say with a grain of salt? And in some lighter news, when I read this article, which I'll link down in the description, I nearly died laughing. I'm not even kidding. This is the closest to a near-death experience I've ever had in my life. And I've been bit by a pit bull before and had to get stitches. This was so amazing. The girl, this this girl is my hero. Woman claims spaghetti strainer as religious headwear in driver's license photo. She is a pastafarian, which if you didn't know, that is uh, that is the religion of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. And the whole thing about the church of the uh, flying spaghetti monster. And, you know, I was thinking about this, whether or not I should talk about this and, you know, if I'm going to be a politically correct podcast or not. No, fuck that. It's my podcast. Welcome to the stealth cast, bitches. Pastafarians are, they exist solely to make fun of creationists. They claim, and it's true, that there is as much evidence for the flying spaghetti monster out there than there is for creationism. And if you watch the Bill Nye Ken Ham debate, again, I went I went in there with an open mind, as I tend to do. And Ken Ham is, oh my God, why are we funding this? He's so full of shit. He's so full of shit. So I I applaud this woman. She is clearly a class A troll. Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, this is how you troll. I'm not talking about swatting. I'm not talking about DDoSing. That's not funny. What I'm saying is funny is taking a driver's license photo where you have a fucking spaghetti strainer on your head. And the rules of taking a driver's license photo, I believe, are you can't wear glasses because those cast shadows on your face. So no shadows on your face, nothing that blocks your face, and I believe nothing with any logos on it. A spaghetti strainer meets all those requirements. And for her driver's license photo, she had one on her head. Imagine, imagine being a police officer and pulling over that girl. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm gonna need to, yeah. You're you're going uh you're going sixty in a fifty five. That's a stupid reason to pull someone over. You're going sixty in a fifty five. Uh, I'm gonna have to see your driver's license, ma'am. What the fuck? You are free to go, man. <laughs> that that's exactly what I. If I looked at her driver's license, well, actually, I think if I were an actual cop, I would first think it was fake. 
<laughs> but then I would be like, ma'am, you're, you're free to go. You've, you've done some good for the world. <laughs> give people, give people a pretty damn good chuckle. I, I love it though. I, they're creationists. I loved what one of my stream viewers said on my stream one time. Ken Ham's whole organization is basically better renamed to the Fight Against Evidence Foundation because that's what they're doing. And that's why the, the Flying Spaghetti Monster is just as legit. There's no evidence for the Flying Spaghetti Monster and there's no evidence for shit that creationists say rather than some random book that some dude wrote a few, you know, a thousand years ago. Let's say, for example, I'm sitting in California right now. Let's say we were having a conversation in the same room in California, right? And I made the absurd claim that dinosaurs did not exist with humans. No, I'm not using that one. Let's use a parallel. Let's say I made the absurd claim that Florida exists, you would say. If if you were a creationist, no, Florida doesn't exist. Humans walk with that. No, um, parallel arguments. Florida doesn't exist. H how do you know it's there? Oh, well, let me bring up Google Maps right now. Let me bring up a satellite image. There's Florida right there. Southeast coast of the U.S. You know, it's just hanging off the side right there, right, ab uh, right above Cuba and the Key West and all that stuff. N no, I don't believe... There's, there's some pretty good evidence on my screen, though. Google Maps right here. That Florida's... No, no way. W have you been to Florida? I, I actually have been to Florida, but let's say I haven't. Have you been to Florida? Well, no. Kind of like how you can't go back in time and see dinosaurs. Let's say I haven't been to Florida, even though I, even though I have been to Florida. It's a very lovely place down there. Very similar to California in terms of weather, at least when I was staying there for a week. Let's say I'd never been to Florida. Hey! Have you ever been to Florida? Well, no. Then how do you know it really exists? How how do I know that I have intestines inside of me? I, I've been bitten by in the arm before, and I've kind of seen the inside of my arm. But let's say my intestines. How do I know that shit's in there? There's a lot of evidence that it is. You know, I don't... I process food pretty well, and liquid, and stuff. Never seen it. Pretty sure it's down there. But no. That's what creationists... You know, they dispute evidence that's pretty, pretty concrete, as concrete as you can get without a time machine. And the flying spaghetti monster is equally as absurd, but it is an idea I'm on board with for the sake of parody, for the sake of people like this awesome girl who decided to stick a spaghetti strainer on her head, and just overall for the sake of making fun of stupid people. Here's the thing that really got me before we close out the show about the Ken Ham Bill Nye debate. When they were asked, I believe it was the very last question, what would get you to convert to the other person's side? Bill Nye, the motherfucking science guy, one of my heroes, said, if you provide me ample evidence, something along the lines of that, that science is wrong and creationism is right, I will believe you. Ken Ham said, basically, I will never believe you. It, this is this is what is right. This is what I believe it is right. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier about being open-minded and being okay with being wrong. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. Yeah, it hurts your pride a little bit, but fuck your pride. All right, let's close out the show. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Stealth Cast. I appreciate your support as always. Be sure to drop me a like if you enjoyed and leave a comment. What do you think about spaghetti strainers on people's heads? Follow me on Twitter at Stella Shampoo for the latest updates on all my videos and when I am streaming. You can find my stream, by the way, twitch.tv slash Stella Shampoo. Like me on Facebook if you don't have a Twitter or if you do have a Twitter, like me on Facebook anyway. Facebook.com slash Stella Shampoo. Find me on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Stella Shampoo and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss a stealth cast. YouTube.com slash Stell Shampoo. One word, no space, no underscore, just Stell Shampoo. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate your support. As always, if you'd like to read any of the articles I spoke about today, check them out down in the description. I've been your host, Nikki, and I'll see you all some other time. Shoelaces!